Welcome to another edition of RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So kick back, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody, this is Rob, your host at RV Talk Radio. We've got a pretty good show here, I think, for you today. We're going to talk about RV preparation and talk a little bit about the week. It's actually been a very, very exciting week. We uh, had a chance to hike down to a place called Stillhead Falls, and it was breathtaking. Oh, my gosh. And uh, if you uh, pay attention in the next couple of days, you should see some videos coming out. We did some 360 videos on that, and we did a enchanting, <laughs> enchanting, breathtaking video, um, regular video, that should come out later in the week. Um, it also has a bonus feature to the video, so it's a little bit longer than we normally make, but it's one of those where you just, oh, it's it was breathtaking. That's all I can say. So it was a good video. The other thing we did this week was really kind of fun, is we went to Deschutes Brewery. Now, Sherry and I, we like a nip once in a while, and we have a beer once in a while. But we've never been to a brewery before, and so it was a new adventure for us, <laughs> and it was awesome. The Deschutes Brewery is a big brewery in Bend, Oregon, and it's growing very fast. In fact, they're extending their business out to the East Coast. Uh, they had some very interesting beers. Things I, I had a beer that had grapefruit in it, and uh, boy, that really stimulated the palate. <laughs> it was like... Wow, I can taste the grapefruit in it. But uh, some great beer. I highly recommend if you get a chance to try some of uh, Deschutes Brewery beer. Uh, it was, it was, f there's something for everybody. And they're very proud of their work and they're privately owned still. They're not taken over by some big corporation. So we did a little bit of 360 video when we were there, went through the tour. Um, we also did regular video, uh, came out pretty good. It's devoted to their tour, and that should be coming out later this week, too. I think on March 3rd. And let's see. What was really cool about that is when you go in, go in, you get four free tastes of anything you want to try, which is great because Sherry got four, I got four, so then we kind of trade. So it's really like eight. <laughs> so uh, they're not big glasses, so four taste is like probably one 16 ounce beer so uh, it was great uh, by the time you're done your palate's going oh my goodness because I don't really like a dark beer um, um, I don't like a bitter beer and Sherry is kind of in the middle so um, after I tasted a, a bitter beer it was hard to kind of get the taste of a regular lighter beer out of your mouth uh, from drinking it so I anyway, it was fun. Watch the video. You'll enjoy it. One of the other uh, enlightening things to Sherry and I that we noticed when we went to Stillhead Falls is in 2008, 2009, we had some very, very, very good studio uh, cameras, uh, video cameras. And we went down to Stillhead back then, and that's those videos are being shared on the new video coming out. And we did some breathtaking, I know, I just love that word, breathtaking, video down there. And it was because we were using some really, a really good video camera. We're talking like a $2,500 camera that we took down there. And what's really neat about it is it goes into manual mode, which means, oh, for example, if you're taking a shot of through some bushes to the water, you can focus on the water and, and make the... Uh, the bushes or the plants or branches kind of go uh, out of focus and you can't really do that with the cameras we have because it's all they're all automated and they auto focus and you can't really play too much with lighting and, and different effects so we're starting to get the hunkering or hankering to uh, maybe pick up another camera so don't be surprised we're kind of keeping our eye out on what's called the Canon G40 and what we liked about it is still a compact camera nothing like our old 2500 Panasonic we had back in those days 
Um, but it does everything, pretty much everything that that old camera did for f basically less than half the cost of some camera that we had before. So <clears throat> um, we're kind of hoping, well, it's one of those, should I get it? Shouldn't I get it? Should I get it? And it's one of those, sure, he goes, you know, you should get it because, Rob, this is what you do now. And the other side of me going, well, you know, you can do a lot of money, you know, do a lot of things with that money other than buy a camera. So I don't know. We'll see. But uh, <laughs> you can see the dilemmas we go through. It's kind of like the podcast. We finally got around to getting all of our better equipment, better microphones and all that stuff. And I don't regret it, even though we spent just as about as much as, <laughs> as we were going to spend on that camera. So I don't know. This is not a not a cheap hobby but uh, it brings pleasure to sherry and i to be able to do a good job and still be spontaneous we don't want to get too bulky with our equipment um but i tell you when you're doing videos and stuff one is people expect better and better as you keep producing videos and the other thing is always keep your ear open to making your audio as nice as you can it's really hard sometimes, especially when you're doing spontaneous uh, recording, but <laughs> not always easy to get your sound that. But when you make your sound good, people feel good, and it really makes the video nicer if you can make your sound and audio come out clear. Well, before I get started on our major subject, I also want to remind you, like I always do in all my shows, is please don't forget to contact us. Uh, don't forget you can always go right to the right to our website and go to the contact page so go to rvtalkradio.com go to contact page and we we do get messages but not enough guys let us know what kind of subjects you like us to talk about some of the things that sherry and i do um and if you don't want to use the website you can just grab your email put our email address in there which is directly to me which is at rob at rvtalkradio.com and what we want to hear about is things you'd like to talk about things that me and sherry may have neglected to talk about if you're a product or service or a company is interested in putting your product on our show just contact us and we'll see what we can work out um the <laughs> The big thing is we want to make sure we're talking about the things you want to hear about. So please take the time and talk to us and don't worry about your spelling. Don't worry about that. We're not, um, I'm worse. I'm the worst thing at spelling. You probably already know that, but just let us know what's on your mind. <laughs> Tell us what you'd like us to talk about. We'll do it. And if you want to be acknowledged, let us know too. So from some of the, emails we have gotten one of the ones we've gotten is some people have asked us about our pets what kind of pets are they and so uh cinder the chocolate lab she is what <laughs> you call a american chocolate lab there's two types and there's um, another one called an english version the english ones are what you see the most they're the ones that kind of have a boxy head and they're famous for duck hunting and very patient and a little bit lazy well calmer and then there's the American Chocolate Lab. They're more energetic, and they're more like a flushing bird dog, if you look at the hunting world. And so they have more energy. They, uh, they're they a little harder to train, but not that much. <laughs> and, uh, but they're much more sleeker, and their noses are more pointier. Uh, they're not quite as boxy as the English version. So if you're ever wondering what kind of dog Cinder is, she's an American Chocolate Lab. And then Lily, a little gray cat, she's a uh, shelter cat, uh, rescue cat. We uh, got her. Um, we had a Russian blue cat before her, which was gray. And they said that she had Russian blue in her. And we don't think she does. But anyway, um, she's been a great cat. She travels well. Uh, both of our animals are three years old. So we kind of got them almost about the same time. We had Lily first for about six months and then we got cinder so they grew up together and so basically they don't want to kill each other they uh they're buddies 
So that's what you want to know about our pets. Changing gears here a little bit, I wanted to stay in the uh, subject matter of RV preparation, of being prepared. And the very first thing I'd like to talk about is I've been introduced to a new app for my phone and it's called Go Mechanic. It's an app you can download on your iPod and it's Android. And what it does is wherever you're at, you can look up things, not only for your vehicle, but for your RV. And when I mean, when you're out and about, um, first of all, you probably know as well as I do, it is a pain in the neck if you have to take your RV and you're living in it to a shop to get something fixed. Now, whether I'm talking either whether it's fifth wheel or a motorhome. So um, what people don't realize if they haven't got into this yet is you can have issues anywhere. So if you're at a park and depending how mechanically inclined you are or not, there's certain things you may not want or do uh, want to do or may not want to do and like changing your oil or fixing a refrigerator or having some kind of diagnostic done, um, having something that's oh, like an alternator change or anything like that. A lot of folks, if you're uh, uh, funded well enough, will just have a mobile kind of unit come in and it and you don't always want to use a RV mobile folks because they're kind of steep in their prices. So there is companies out there all over that will come to you at your RV park that are not RV mobile uh, units and they can have reasonable prices. Uh, same thing with locksmiths, uh, get locked out of your rig, things like that. So what the Go Mechanic uh, application is awesome for finding that kind of service and it's not only good for just rvs it's good for your just vehicle so it's across the board good tool so i have it on my phone and i believe it costs um 2.99 or 3.99 i'm not sure uh they there was a, a temporary opening to get a free version of it and i i, I grabbed it and uh this application will cover oil changes, um, more detailed information, um, if you have tire issues, uh, and finding people that will come to you. Uh, you can go to them too, but that's what this is so nice is, is for mobile folks. So this is, once again, it's called Go Mechanic. They also cover auto or RV related issues, and of course, glass. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're heading to Alaska, <laughs> you know about glass, uh, windshields. So once again, these are all services that will come to you. And uh, we're not just talking about RVs. We're talking about your vehicle or truck. So I urge you today to get on your phone, go to the app store, check out Go Mechanic. It works well. I played with it. It's useful, and right now when I have it, I go, oh, I can search different things. But I know the day that I'm broke down between Reno and Las Vegas in the middle of the desert or something like that happens, this application is going to be a blessing. <laughs> so I'm telling you, please take the time. Download Go Mechanic. You will have a nice peace of mind of having a tool that can save your patootie <laughs> if you're in trouble or if you just need some services done that hey you know you're getting too, i'm getting too old to be r crawling up underneath a rig and stuff so hey hire some young kid to do it so go mechanic check it out so today's subject i've told you earlier was about being prepared and i've been bringing this subject up a lot because I've been watching things on the internet when I can of uh, folks out there with broken transmissions or uh, their rigs won't start and their older rigs are maybe uh, uh, used 
things like that. And uh, a lot of them, they act like they, oh my God, where am I get get the money and things like that. And I could take the old fatherly approach and start, you know, preaching about being prepared as far as money and stuff. But instead of that, I thought I'd do some research and I connected up with something that Sherry and I use. And what we use is we have money set aside, but <laughs> I'm into protection. So um, all my cars are well insured, things like that. But also our RV, the RV we bought, we um, put an extended warranty on. So what we have is a good Sam warranty on our RV, our fifth wheel. And it got me kind of curious as like, okay, what if I bought my RV directly from someone else? Got a good deal, got a really nice RV. Maybe it's only three or four years old and I paid cash for it or however I bought it. And uh, I don't have the privilege of having uh, a warranty on my rig because it's not used, a uh, new, sorry. So what's the solution for that? So I. Instead of sitting there belly aching to people about not being prepared, we proactively went out and reached out to the Good Sam Extended Service Program or plan and, and, and asked them, first of all, how can I buy a rig that's used, maybe it's 5, 10, 15 years old, can I buy a rig like that and can I get a warranty put on it? And the answer is absolutely yes. Now, when you do that, it's actually an insurance, um, not so much a warranty. But all you have to do, and we've set up a program for our listeners now and our viewers on our uh, YouTube, a way to do that absolutely free to find out if you can actually afford to set up a extended warranty or extended service plan on your used rig to save you from being wiped out financially if something happens. Here's what we set up for you. We contacted the Good Sam folks and we said, you know, I really, really want people to start having an easy way to find out if they can get some protection for the rig that they just bought. And they said, no problem. So what we did is we set up a connection between Good Sam Warranty folks or extended service plan folks and ourselves. And so here's how it works. If you go to any of our websites now, whether it's RV Talk Radio, RV Travel Buddy or RV Travel Quest, there is now a button a link um, by itself that says <laughs> Good Sam um, Extended Service Plan. And you click on that, and it'll take you to our page on RV Talk Radio that will have a, uh, a button on it. You press that button, and it shoots. You have to use our button because there's something special that happens if you do this. It'll take you to their site to get a free free quote for your RV to see if you can get a extended warranty put on it. If you get a quote from them, not only will you get a quote to find out whether you can uh, get a plan like that to protect yourselves, you also get a $10 Camping World certificate. $10. And I don't care what you say about <laughs> whether you like Camping World or not, we all go there. I love the place and I would definitely use and like a $10 gift certificate. So once again, either you can go to our websites at rvtalkradio.com. There's a button there. There's also one on RV Travel Quest and RV Travel Buddy that says Good Sam Extended Service Plan and click on it. Go to the link and it just says click here. Go to that spot, fill out the form. 
find out if you can afford or if or find a plan that will suit you for your RV, whether it's a trailer, fifth wheel, camper, uh, or motorhome, including and they also have programs for your car and truck. And uh, find out if you can protect yourself. And people, I'm telling you, you got to protect yourself out there. Uh, it's going to happen. What I really cringe to think about that, you're out in some state that you don't know uh, the area, and you go to Joe Bob's famous mechanic, and he, he says, oh, yeah, I can fix it. Uh, I'd prefer any day to see you guys going to qualified RV dealers knowing that they uh, will accept a good SAM extended warranty and get your rig fixed right. You know they'll have the right parts. They know how to deal with RVs and wiring and how things are uh, built and get the job done right. So you won't have to be afraid to go to the big camping worlds and have your rig worked on because it's gonna you, know, you think the cost is gonna wipe you out or you or some of these other really big RV places that can be intimidating. Uh, I can tell you right now, we use camping world. We'll use other ones because there's not a camping world everywhere we go, but uh, darn close. Uh, we've been accommodated very well, and. At the end of the day, when we had to write the check for the bill and we had big things done, they took good care of us and we had no problems using our Good Sam extended warranty. So I urge you today, go to our website or go to the link below in this description. Go get yourself a quote for free. And in return, they'll give you a $10 Camping World gift certificate and see if we can make your life just a little bit more pleasant as an RVer. And I urge you, if you haven't come out full-timing yet or just getting ready to or just doing part-time, if you do not have a... This is a mechanical coverage. And so we're not talking about like a car insurance. We're talking about fixing things on your rig. This is the kind of protection you want. So now we covered a little bit of something that makes me feel better of knowing that we offered you something that might make it just a little bit nicer. Please don't hesitate to go get a quote. Just like I said, go to our website, go to the page, get a quote. And in return, we'll give you $10. <laughs> at Camping World. It's worth it. But the other thing is, is it's really good if you're new to RVing and maybe you're thinking about full-timing, I urge you to do a lot of test runs before you go full-time. And the reason being is you'll have a chance to find out that things are going to start happening. Uh, little things. Uh, hoses won't fit. Don't have enough hoses. Um, you need to hold something together with some tape or whatever. And just silly things happen and temporary fixes and stuff like that. And what's really cool about that is if you do all those extended trips before you full time, you will start realizing what tools and what kind of th resources you should have with you all the time. So you'll find yourself buying tools. You'll find yourself buying lubricants. You'll find yourself buying tapes and twist ties and um, things you never really thought you need have, you know, would have to have for just a truck or, or, or a car. But uh, uh, to be prepared is also to uh, get your equipment up to, up to date and your resources and tools. So that's why he's like, more short trips you can do, especially when you're only going for a weekend or so, you can recover quite easily. And um, <laughs> you'll find yourself going to uh, uh, Harbor Freight uh, every other weekend. 
just to start building up your tools and, and all your little doodads that's nice to have bailing wire to tapes to twist ties to the little um, uh, plastic ties uh, little electrical crimp tools things like that um, and you don't have to do it all at once that's the nice thing take your time so being prepared being prepared so the other big thing is okay if you choose not to get a warranty or extended uh, service plan and I just don't know why you wouldn't then you need to have and you know you still need to have money available uh, nothing's free and not everything's covered on plans either you got to have some money set aside and how you do it is up to you and I I'm a father with two kids in their 30s. I'd be the first one to preach is stay out of debt. But I would preach to my kids if they're going to decide to do RVing um, to go get a credit card. Shop around and see if you can get a good one. Get yourself a $5,000, $10,000 credit card. Don't use it. Don't use it. Um, just have it. So if you're three states away and you're away from home and you don't know what's go, you know, who's who and what's what. Uh, you could get overcharged. Things could happen. You may have to be towed. And if you don't have some protection, like towing insurance, which you get through Good Sam too, uh, you're going to be stressed, very stressed. I mean stressed. And it's not a pretty sight. But if you know you got, all right, this is what I've been um prepared for I have a credit card that can get me taken care of and I'll find a way to get it paid off as quick as possible but trust me at that particular time you'd be darn glad that you did that or you had money set aside that was just for this purpose so I know it seems hard I know it seems silly I know getting a warranty or getting a, a credit card or getting cash set aside is hard and you don't want to do it but please remember me right now this very second and I caused you to go get something like that and the day something happens I truly truly hope say that you're saying to yourself I'm kind of glad I listened to Robin Sherry because right now I'm getting my rig towed I got to go 200 miles to the, to the closest uh, repair place for an RV and it could have cost me a fortune or hurt me really bad, but I was prepared. Yeah, I know. It sounds like everything's negative, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't mean to be that way. These are just things that happen. And I cannot express how much the good over um, overcomes all this negative we talk about all the time because if you don't take care of the issues that could come up then no RVing is not fun but just a few things like what we've been talking about earlier will make the RV experience over the top so I mean just to give you an example what Sherry and I and Sherry still is doing some contract work so life is serious we call that adulting adulting time <laughs> and I love that word it came from spot the Scots and we uh, so we still have to sit down and do our taxes like everybody else we still have to pay bills we balance our checkbooks. Uh, we, uh, on top of all that, we got editing and and things for the business that we have to take care of. We have a corporation, so we have to take care of that and the licensing and trademarks and all that stuff. And uh, so, there's a lot of serious adulting time. But in the meantime, here's the good stuff. Uh, in the last two weeks, Sherry and I, we're in Central Oregon right now. We're be moving on here pretty soon but uh 
We've been to Lake Billy Chinook. We've got to go to the Warm Springs Reservation Museum. We just got back from the Deschutes Brewery. We just did some photography up in Sisters. We have a whole bunch of other things that we're going to try to do before we leave the area. Um, we've taken rides out to Prineville. We've got to do some hiking and all of my, all during all that time, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's one of those days. During all that time, we've also did adulting time, important things like taking care of bills, fixing things, um, and we just turn it into fun. Uh, they're not obstacles, they're opportunities. Remember that, things are not <laughs> obstacles, they're opportunities. So Sherry and I, while we were here, we had to do uh, some taping on our slides uh, a few little things, modifications we wanted to do, and we turned it into fun. Uh, that's just how it is. The more you can do yourself, by the way, the better. But not everybody's mechanically inclined. I'm kind of half and half. I, and I'm getting older, and I, you know, climbing ladders, and, and I, I know I need to lose a little weight, a lot of weight. Anyway, but uh, Sherry and I are the kind of people that hire people to do stuff uh, like that for us because we're just getting older in age and is you know, things are harder getting down on your knees and crawling around and things wasn't quite as easy I mean, it was easier 10 or 20 years ago but it's getting harder so uh anyway we turn those kind of things into fun and then when you do a project and you're done it feels really good but there's also stuff you just uh you got to have somebody else do for you so anyway i just want to make sure that you don't get the wrong impression that our show here is to take those things that could really make RVing terrible and take care of it now and set yourself up for success. And that's what this show is all about. Another thing I notice a lot on comments in other shows and in uh, especially folks that maybe shouldn't be out here yet because they aren't financially ready is they always talk about how much does it cost? How much does it cost to be an RVer? <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of things that are not any different than owning a home. But one thing you can control is your cost of your rent. Uh, as far as, like for example, Sherry and I, we would, now we're going to be paying for some stuff, no doubt. And we want to because there's some three, four, and five star resorts we want to go to. That's the kind of stuff me and Sherry like. However, we've been full-timing for almost two months now. We haven't paid a dime in rent. Not a dime. Now, we're staying on someone's property, and, and in return, I know I'm making their uh, <laughs> electric meter go nuts. So I'm buying them dinner, and we're doing a lot of special things for the folks that live here. Uh, but it's a pleasure to do that for them anyway. But I figure they're going to have an electric bill that's going to knock their socks off because we're plugged into them. And... Uh, and we also tap into their internet. So <laughs> Sherry's father's probably going, God, why is my internet so slow? It's because I'm sucking up all the, the bandwidth out, out here in the uh, Wi-Fi Ranger we have. So anyway, cost. Uh, a lot of things are not so much. I mean, food's not going to be indifferent, and insurances aren't really that. In fact, insurance would be a little higher on the RV because if you're using the RV insurance you have now, just the normal stuff, uh, you're not protected. You you need to go find, and Sherry and I actually are converting our insurance right now. We'll tell you more as we go. But your, the stuff in your RV is not covered. Your RV is covered, but the stuff in your inside is not. So you got to make sure you get the right kind of insurance, and it's going to cost a little more than what you're currently paying, but you probably don't have to have homeowners anymore, so it kind of makes up the difference. I think the quotes we're getting so far are turning out to be around five or 600 a year for coverage on the RV, but that's all I know right now. We haven't officially signed up for one yet. And uh, we'll let you know what we find out on that. Well, um, but, you know, you're, you're out here. If you're not working normal and you're doing contract kind of work or things like that, you're going to have to put into your formula health insurance. And uh, Sherry and I are fortunate enough to have something through her company. And uh, so we're, we're doing pretty good in that. So we can't, 
However, we have been doing the research on Obamacare stuff, and I'm not real happy with that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, for a while, I, I used to say, yay, yay, health care. I like what you did there. And now that I've actually got in there and started doing homework about getting health insurance for Sherry and I using that program, I'm not convinced that that was the way to go. So <laughs> politically speaking, I've been hearing folks saying oh, they'd want to scrap Obamacare. Uh, I, I, I might be on board on that. I don't know yet because I'm not real happy with what I'm seeing because uh, we make enough money to be, well, we're certainly not going to be subsidized, so we have to pay full price. It's not helping us any, and it seems to be a little more expensive than the day that we had to get our own independent insurance pack in 2006 or seven, uh, quite a bit, almost like one-third higher. So there's a cost you got to keep in mind, but... You can control your rent and utilities is big time, a uh, lot cheaper. So if, if those two items could be reduced for you uh, and your income is staying relatively the same, you'll find a significant savings. Uh, Sherry and I, I, I think I don't know what it is, but when you're in RV, we tend to uh, eat at home more cook more so our expenses and eating out has gone down maybe because we're not doing the nine to five and all stressed out at the end of the day and say let's get pizza but if you kind of calculate how much you spend on septic water bill how much do you pay on electric how much do you pay on rent any other services uh, like cable bills and stuff like that we just signed up for dish so we do pay somewhere around $59 a month for that service. Uh, that'll probably change a little bit because we have a discount kind of thing going. So I'm, let's say it's, let's say 70. That's uh, actually my old bill for cable with Com Comcast was around 135 or, or higher. So that's down, but I still have a, a television service. Um, so I think the biggest savings you're going to see is ut utilities and rent for sure. Uh, but please send us uh, notes of things we might have overlooked. Some things in insurance might go down if you don't have to do homeowners. Uh, I think in some cases your fuel bill could go down depending where you're located. If you go to an RV park that's close to the cities and stuff like that, very low uh, driving. Um, the other thing is if you go to big cities and stuff and utilize public um, if you don't know the area very well, the best way to go would be use public transportation. That could be a lot more affordable than trying to um, take your car or vehicle around the city, pay for parking or, or things like that. So those are things that probably would help with your daily expenses, but it's going to be different for everybody. Whether you buy an RV that you're paying for, you pay it in cash, those things are all different. But generally speaking, I think the things I just identified are the things that will help save you money. I know this might go off the uh, subject a little bit, but not totally. One of the things that surprised me was when we hit the road, what we didn't address, which I would urge you to address early, is in the RV, because of the changing climates of going from place to place, I would highly recommend that you get a good air purifier. So when you go into regions that have a lot of dust and things like that and some people are really sensitive to that sherry and i aren't but sometimes when the sun's coming through the the, <laughs> the window you can be like oh my goodness look at all the dust and particles in the air and when you have pets too you're going to have the the fur so we invested in a good um, upright air purifier just to um, help filter the air in here and the dust and the other thing that caught us off guard is we had one of those little plate type of uh, dehumidifiers, but it, that's not enough and they're kind of bulky. So we bought a compact version of a that actually collects water um, that you plug in. And because we're just noticing moisture is a, a battle too. Um, some places we've gone are all the windows in the inside were just wet, just totally. And, 
you know that this can't be good and it's good for that's a good setup for creating mold inside your rv so we addressed that right away but we didn't that's something we discovered afterwards so if you're just doing extended rving or getting ready to invest in good not just not just cheap stuff good uh humidifier um uh well, air purifier and dehumidifier. Those two items are a must for sure. So take care of that cost before you start doing this, and then you don't have to worry about it later. And, of course, probably the other cost you probably should put in your uh, <laughs> your books is you will be paying for your laundry and propane. Uh, so you're doing rent, and you're in a cold area, and say you're only paying 400 a month for that but if you're buying a propane that which can cost for well, the seven gallon tank can cost between eight to twenty dollars depending where you buy you know what the cost of propane is in that area that's part of your rent that's part of your monthly expenses so if you can utilize the electricity you should if you can't propane will be another cost so anyway and the other thing is when you're shopping for rv parks it's amazing it just change it's not the same everywhere you go for example we're going to go to a park for a couple of months um, in arizona and the cost you go oh it's going to be ghastly uh, between 700 to 900 we're going to actually go with a uh, a deluxe place uh, so it's going to be around 900 a month but that includes electricity and you say, well, gosh, that seems high and stuff. <laughs> Wait till you go down south and stay in an RV park and they charge you for electricity. You will realize that's a good deal. So uh, electricity, I know when we're in Vegas at the Oasis, I think we got as high as 200 a month when we stayed there for a couple months uh, and, and higher. So that's, that's really part of your rent. So um, we thought that was fair and that's where we're going to go. It's kind of a nice park and has good you know good facilities and space lots of space between the rvs and it's good for our pets so we're gonna go with a premium site and uh but uh, you know i was really surprised that included electricity so shop around ask questions um the cost for your rv spaces are um all over the board so you just never know and i i hope that's helpful to you Now that we have Dish Network, we're able to see some of the shows we enjoyed. And there was a show on the other day that I, I guess it's been on for a while. And some people say, Rob, it's been going for a while. But it's uh, a series about um, people moving into tiny homes, which is equivalent to what we're doing in RVing. Um, except I think RVs are, RV, <laughs> RVs are bigger. <laughs> I, some of those houses, I've been like, are you kidding me? But anyway, uh, what I got a kick out of this one show, they actually go through the whole process with people moving out of a big house or apartment and downsizing, which you got to do, and uh, and then having their little home being built and they're custom to their what they like and their needs and stuff like that. And there was this one, and if you guys watch the show, you probably remember which one it is, but it was this young couple. Um, they're kind of independent in their house, but they wanted to do a tiny home. But they were kind of concerned that those two didn't weren't close enough as a couple. So they put a <laughs> ball and chain between them, <laughs> literally put chains on their uh, ankles, and had to learn how to maneuver around the house and do things. I mean, from showers to bathrooms to cooking to uh, everything activity they uh, could do and coordinate together and at first when I saw that I thought that's not real realistic and then Sherry and I kind of didn't really notice it until we saw that show that is really a true statement I don't know how many times that I'll be sitting at the dining room table um, I'm either editing I always have work to do and Sherry's doing something in the kitchen and I might want to go make a cup of coffee well I just don't get up and go make a cup of coffee. I check, see what Sherry's doing. I'll tell her, are you going to, you know, ask, actually find out how long she'll be in the kitchen. We could both fit in there, but um, it's a coordinated effort. 
<laughs> there's that word coordinated effort so I didn't really realize it as uh, as much as I did after seeing that show that sure and I coordinate our movements in the RV together um, and when I can't use a room like a restroom or or take a shower when she's in her drying her hair and stuff we change our schedules to meet each other's needs as a coordinated effort to get what we need to get done so when she says oh I'm gonna go up and do this in a minute uh, then you can make your coffee and it's like cool so I'll wait five minutes she does her thing I get up then I go make my coffee um, same thing with what chairs we're using what couches we're using playing with the dogs going outside uh, taking showers um, getting ready for bed um, changing you know when you're changing your clothes it's kind of nice to have the space you want uh, while you're doing that and then I'll get up later and change mine to a bathrobe or whatever but I, I didn't actually realize how often that we were doing coordinated efforts together uh, and it just it's not just movement it's as equipment and things that you have um, are really important um, to get used to doing so once again there's that little trick of going out do some extended RVing get used to each other get used to your movements and be humble uh, I know that you really really want to go dry your hair well maybe he's got to finish shaving but you just you have to be patient and humble and once you get past that realize that you're just trying to make this small living work it becomes a symphony uh, and that's the best way to describe it is when it's going well it's like a very coordinated symphony of things happening in the RV so I, I hope that's a, a good uh, piece of advice for you too to get prepared to be an RVer and here is the biggest thing I want to pass on to people to get prepared to be an RVer so everybody's situation is going to be different some people will be able to full-time full time, full you know and, and all the time some people will be snowbirds and they'll just go for four or five months because they have a home already some people are just gonna full um, full time for a couple of months because they have an opportunity to do so some are just just do the weekend warrior stuff all of it's good every part of it and uh I don't even know how long Sherry and I will be on the road full time. Um, it may stop for a while and then we'll get unable to do it again. But you'll know, be extended during that time. Anyway, so the biggest part I'd want to pass on for being prepared to be an RVer, especially if it may only be temporary um, at certain times or half a year or whatever your situation, maybe you're a teacher and you maybe you just go. Uh, going uh, for the summers take the time to one smell the roses to be grateful the reason I say that is first you never know how things how long things will last there's so many factors jobs work money health family crises things like that could change things in a heartbeat so in 2006, Sherry and I were traveling, and uh, you know we've hinted that we had we were wiped out back in 2008, and uh, it took us a few years to get back on our feet. And I kind of look back, and and I find myself the the five years that we had to recover is what kept us motivated was all the pictures and memories of the time we got the RV full time the first time. And a couple of times I felt like I thought about it and I said, you know, I, I took a lot of that for granted. And now that I don't have it anymore, I miss it so. And I feel like I may not have smelled the roses or was grateful at the time. And, and the big thing I'd want to pass on to you is if you're RVing, no matter it's part-time, extended, full-time, whatever you're doing, walk out the door and just stop for a minute and be grateful that you had this opportunity because you don't know how long it's going to last. 
And when you're young, you think it will last forever. When you get our age, you realize you're not invincible. Things will change. Life is guaranteed to change. We can't stop it. And so when it's a good day, like Sherry and I, we had a day like everything that we did, the the Deschutes Brewery, and then we went out to Sisters and stopped at this viewpoint I wanted to show her that was really good for photography. And uh, we met her folks for dinner. We wanted to take them out um, personally to thank them for letting us stay at the property. And we just were driving home and you said, you know, this was a really good day. And I still don't do that enough. Be grateful if you can even do a little bit of RVing. And, and don't take it for granted that, oh, this is my life, da-da-da-da. You kind of just get into the mode and you kind of forget just how lucky you are to be an RVer and to go see places that if you were uh, in a stick-built house, you'd be stuck. So that is the best piece of advice I could give any RVer for being prepared is when the time finally comes, each day that you wake up, and you're RVing, and you're in a new place. I don't know if you're spiritually motivated or not, but just take the time and be grateful and smell the roses because you do not know how long all this is going to last. And I know it's like, oh, it's going to go on forever. It's like, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's wisdom talking to you right now or age. I don't know what it is, but I can guarantee you things will change. Uh, we watch all these shows of uh, the different RVers right now. Ten years from now, it'll be a whole new set of people. Um, some of us will last maybe one out of uh, every 50, but it'll be different. New people, new videos, new people. And we had this, you know, Things are going to change. It seems like a slow process, but it actually goes pretty fast. Be grateful. Smell the roses. As time has been going by, a few things that we've noticed <laughs> with our program and our videos and our channel is everything's growing. And, of course... There's the business aspect of everything that we do. Uh, we are a, you know, we there's big money uh, on our side of equipment and things that we're doing, and and we'll continue to do that. And so, you know, we always like when folks uh, buy our stickers, and we also you'll notice in our description we have stickers for RV Talk Radio and stickers for uh, RV Travel Buddy, which is the uh, trademark logo that you can only buy from us. Um, they always help. And, uh, of course, we have the business side of sponsorships. And uh, that's just part of life. Uh, you know, free TV is not really free TV. You know, the advertisers pay for it. And, and we have the same things happen here, too. But uh, the one thing I can definitely guarantee you is we're going to try to keep this homegrown. Keep it down to earth. Things will change. We will get more and more uh, folks that uh, uh, we're noticing that are already interested in our programs. They will not be perfect. They'll be funny. There'll be things that wouldn't be in a regular production of a podcast and or uh, our videos because we like it that way. Just like when we do interviews, things like that, we let the dog bark once in a while. Or if we do an uh, interview, Cinder will be in it. And the reason is, is this is real life, real stuff. And uh, yet we still take the time to try to do a production uh, that uh, doesn't last too long. And, and we do uh, transitions between sh shots and add music and, uh, and try to put storylines to every video. Some are hard to do, some are piece of cake. Same with the show. Being prepared, boy, we really covered a lot of stuff in this show from <laughs> from breakdowns, warranty services. Please, go get a quote. Um, go Mechanic, that's a great app to go try. 
there's lots of great apps out there, but uh, this one, uh, this one's for emergencies. And we're talking being prepared. So check out Go Mechanic. We've talked about the lifestyle, things that we've just learned about being prepared, having money set aside. We covered a lot of stuff. And uh, some of it may even sound preachy. I apologize. <laughs> it's as we care. And our show will always care. And um, even as we grow and get bigger and bigger, um, there's new things happening to us that we never had to deal with before. Uh, folks interested in uh, putting their products on our shows, things like that. And at the same time, we have to negotiate the fact that this time and money needs to be covered too. So uh, there will be sponsors. There will be commercials. There will be stuff like that. But the show will be always Robin Sherry. And um, realistic stories and lots of chuckles. And, and the big thing is a big smile. So I always want to make sure that our listeners and our viewers always know that that's our intention. It will stay that way. Um, but there is necessities of the fact that this is a business and uh, uh, I don't know what the future will bring. I'm just kind of warning everybody that um, new things will come along. Um, and if we talk about a product, it's one that we've used, one that we like, and one we think will benefit people. Sometimes we'll have sponsors that pay money just to be on our show. Others will do something that will benefit our listeners or viewers. But there will always be good intentions behind all of them. So we'll see what the future brings, but don't be surprised if you see a sponsor hop on board or see us talking about products like we did today that we b truly, truly believe in and use ourselves. And and. One of those is uh, the Good Sam Warranty and Go Mechanic. Both are ones that they've asked us to evaluate or we contacted them. And we think they're good stuff. And uh, we just want the best for people that, before they come out here or even if they're out here already that we can help them out and make their life a little bit nicer. Nothing, nothing is better than when we get notes from our listeners and viewers of how they were inspired, how much we make them smile, how much they think Sherry and I are cute, <laughs> and uh, we make mistakes. I say, and, um, and so, and too many words too much, and uh, I, I, I see it, I hear it, I try to improve on it, but I do the best I can. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, Believe it or not, I used to be a teacher, for, uh, and uh, I was really good at catching all that, but nowadays I find that the, we have to change so many subjects and changing that uh, I'm doing the ends and ums too much, and I know, and we'll try to get better at that. But, you know, it's human. It's real. So I just want to say thank you, guys. We really appreciate you. We love the notes. We love the questions. We love the advice. Um, I know as we get bigger, we're going to end up dealing with trolls and, and negative things too. We will not let that overcome us, but that's part of growing when your channel grows. And so, so be it. We'll deal with it. Uh, we're not the first ones, nor the last ones who have to deal with that kind of stuff. We will just put it in perspective and move forward. So that pretty much concludes our show. I want to take the time to say thank you very much for listening and watching our videos. Sherry and I will do the best job we can. I hope that we gave you some good advice for being prepared for RVing. And <laughs> Cinder and Lily say roof and meow. So anyway, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. See you next Monday. Bye now. Bye.